And I love the little testimony at the end where um, uh, Kim had said, I don't really want to go through a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> I am so sorry, but that's what this sermon's all about this morning. <laughs> Reminding you that there's a lot of stuff. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. And I don't want to go through a lot of the stuff. But, you know, unfortunately, we are living in the world and the day that we're in. And it is so difficult to try to navigate through this world because this world is so filled with deceit. And it's so difficult to know what, what you, if, if what you're seeing is true. Uh, and so we always look to the Scripture so that we know for certain what we're looking at. We know for certain what the future holds. So let's go again to Matthew chapter 24. <laughs> and right. so for those of you who are familiar with Matthew chapter 24, you realize that I wasn't lying when I said that there are uh, some stuff that we will have to go through. Hopefully this will be rather forgiving for you today because uh, the verses in Matthew will be a few. And so Matthew chapter 24... There are a couple of uh, words here that we will dissect and then we'll, we'll move on. So Matthew chapter 24. All right. If you are there, please say amen. Amen. If you are not, say oh my. <laughs> All right. Matthew chapter 24. Let's look at verse uh, let's, you know, just to set this up, let's look at Matthew chapter 24 and let's look at verse 3. And he said, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Let's flip over and let's uh, look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. I don't like this word afflicted. I don't mind the other word so much. The other word says, and shall kill you. And I look at that, and shall kill you, and a lot of times when people see, and shall kill you, they tend to think, oh, this is so sad. Well, I'm not worried so much about that part. I'm really not. I think Pastor Carl would agree with you that that part would be Victory. Amen. You see, that part would be victory. It's where it says, they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. And so you know yours truly. I look at this word afflicted and I did some research and I found out that that is to apply mental or bodily pain. Yikes. The mental part, hey, there's only so much you can do with what I've got here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> to apply mental or bodily pain. I am, not I am not like some of you people who can endure some of these bodily pains. I don't want to see that. I don't want that to go through that stuff. You see? But the Word of God says, They shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. But look at this verse. And ye shall be hated of all nations. This is, but, but it goes on further. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Meaning all nations will hate you for Jesus' sake. You, and so Jesus was wanting it to be abundantly clear that just for standing for Jesus Christ, you will receive... You will receive affliction. You'll be hated of all nations for Jesus' sake. I want us to look at verse 10, and I want us to really analyze this. He was talking to His disciples about what it's going to be like in the future. Okay? So He says this, And then shall many be... What's that word? Amen. Oh, I don't know if I should give you some examples of this, but it is absolutely appalling at some of the things that the media wants to be offended about or that makes you think that every 
everybody else is offended about. A lot of times, people will say, well, you can't say this. This is offensive. You can't say this. This is offensive. You can't use this. and You can't use that. I know that we need to be sensitive to, be offend, to offend other people if we're doing it with evil. But if we just misstep and say something that should cause someone else to have a bad time, well, then that was inadvertent. You shouldn't be held accountable for those things. But this is unbelievable. The writer here wants you to see this, that... And then shall many be offended. And when I think of today's society, I'm also thinking, of, and when I say society, I'm thinking media, the political leadership, evil manipulators. How about this? Satan himself is trying to sidetrack you. Amen. Satan himself is trying to sidetrack you. Every one of you into being so careful as not to do or say anything that may be offensive to someone else because he wants to silence you. Right. He wants you to be quiet. He wants you to say nothing. He wants you to zip it. He doesn't want you to, again, like the First Amendment. He right. doesn't want you to proclaim anything that you believe is truth. He wants the truth to be secluded and dictated by him. The evil manipulator, Satan himself. Right. And it's all about silencing you because you, again, and we are in that world today, right. to where right. you just, you have to be careful. You can't, you have to be careful because someone will jump all over that and say, this offended me, or this offended me, or that offended me. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out and act like a lunatic and just say whatever you want. We talked about that last week, didn't we? Like, zip your mouth. There's a lot of times you should remain silent. There's a lot of times that, you know, and I really truly believe this, that Facebook kind of is a setup for a lot of people. It's right. a setup for a lot of people just to prove how inferior their minds are. I really believe it. And so, but, but this, this says, and many shall be offended. Well, I'll tell you, our, again, society, Satan himself, evil manipulators are trying to put you down, to silence you, trying to place you into a place of dependency and depression. It wants you to feel like that I just, I am all alone in this world. I feel like I'm the only one who believes this way or I'm the only one who, who, who has to be careful about what I'm saying. Again, we should not be ashamed of certain things. Number one, we shouldn't be ashamed of our forefathers. We shouldn't be ashamed Amen. of the color of our skin, regardless of what color it is. Amen. I don't care what color your skin is. You should never, ever, ever apologize. Right. You should never be ashamed. You, again, you should never be ashamed of where your forefathers were from. Were they from England? Were they from Australia? Were they from Africa? Were they from Europe? Were they from Asia? Wherever. Do not be ashamed of who God made you to be. Amen. Amen. You don't need to apologize to anybody for that. Right. Ever. Because God already knew you before you were born. Amen. He was forming you together. In fact, I would say this. What is it? Uh, Jacob and Esau? I'm pretty sure that Esau had no idea that he was going to be red and hairy. <laughs> the hairy part I'm okay with. <laughs> Even the red part I'm going to be okay with. The idea is he didn't know what color he was going to be and you didn't either. That's right. That's right. But society now is trying to make you be ashamed of your forefathers or the color of your skin. Even the God you serve only if it's Jesus Christ. Have you noticed that? Everybody else seems like they get a pass to worship and serve whatever God they want. But if it's Christ Jesus, then you are an evil hate monger. Yep. It is sad. It is sad to see that. How about this? We are, are now being conditioned and even our younger generation is being conditioned to where they need to be ashamed of the Bible and what it says. Oh, it's so sad. And even be ashamed of the God of the Bible. Do not be ashamed, like I said, of the color of your skin or your ethnicity or your hair color or your lack thereof. Amen. Amen. It's okay. It's all right. And, and some very famous people were bald. Amen. But don't be comparing yourself to other people. Be happy with who you are. Amen. If you have red hair, then just say thank you, Jesus, for red hair. It's 
very unique. Yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Be happy with what you've got. Some people would love to have your hair. Yes. I know this. <laughs> <laughs> you for, look. We uh, if Jesus uh, and look, that, this is I was thinking this last night. I was thinking if Jesus were to walk in these doors right now, what would he say to the people? You see, that's what kind of ministers you need. Mm -hmm. You need to, you need the type of ministers who are concerned with making sure that you know what Jesus would say to you today. Amen. Not what Je it's, so so you get the point. If Jesus were to walk in, I think he would tell us this. Be careful. The rest of the world is trying to get you sidetracked into looking at all of these other things. Forget looking to all the other things. Even, even a, a lot of times Christians get to the point to where we are so fixated on trying to predict or trying to find out who the devil is. Who is the devil? Or where is the devil? That we spend more time trying to find out who the devil is than who Jesus is. We need to stay focused on Christ Jesus. Amen. Right. Our God is amazing. But again, the rest of the society wants us to apologize for everything. Again, like I said, we don't owe anybody an apology for our ancestry. Could, did you know that Jesus, on his mother's side, had an ancestry of harlotry, murders, liars, and adulterers? That's true. Jesus didn't go around saying, I am so sorry for what my forefathers did. I'm so sorry for what on my mother's side. My dad's side was perfect. <laughs> it seems like that that's what I teach my children. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> but, the, <laughs> but the idea is, I mean, look at his ancestry. Look at his look at the, the people in his ancestry. Jesus didn't come saying, I owe it to the rest of the world to apologize for my forefathers and what they did. Hey, I'll tell you what, our society, our church people, we have too much to worry about our own actions Amen. than about our forefathers. We need to fix ourselves now. Amen. We need to humble ourselves. We need to get on our knees and beg God for forgiveness for our sins. Amen. Accept Him as our personal Savior and accept His free gift of everlasting life. But Jesus even had an ancestry chart that He probably wasn't too um, excited to tell everybody about. But on His dad's side, Jesus was perfect. And He doesn't have to apologize for that either. Yes. You hear me? He didn't think of it. A lot of people, well, oh yeah, well, your dad said, well, you were perfect. Well, I'm not apologizing for that. And the same goes for us. If you were raised and you had wealth, you don't need to apologize for that. If you were raised and you were poor, you don't have to apologize for that. Hey, we are who we are by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. And look at you here today. No matter what background you came from, God will allow you to be in His family. That's right. Rich or poor, right. whatever color or skin... Hey, we are all together whenever it comes to the family of God. Amen. I'm tired of the media trying to say we're all in this together. Well, we're not all in this together. Because a lot of times people are in it for their own benefit. Yes. A lot of times people are looking for their own prosperity during difficult times. Yes. Hey, I'm in it to do God's will. Yes. I'm in it to follow Jesus Christ. Now, are you in it with me? You see, Amen. we're in it for the Lord. But again, mostly, you don't need to be ashamed of your Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Do you hear me? We don't need to be ashamed of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Right. We don't need to be ashamed of Christ Jesus or His Word. Yeah. Matthew chapter, uh, I'm going to read it again just for emphasis. Matthew chapter 24, verses 9. The they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for Jesus' sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall what? Hate, Hate one another. Many are going to betray one another. They will just stab you in the back in three seconds if it means that they can get up on you. Yeah. Oh, that is today's world, isn't it? 
Again, many will betray one another, and many false prophets shall rise and shall, what's that word? Deceive, Deceive many. That means people are going to just buy right into whatever they have to say. I'll tell you what is amazing is this is exactly what it's like sometimes when you watch the infomercials on TV. Yep. They will make you believe that that pan really, really, <laughs> truly will not have an egg stick to it. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, oh, I need one of those. God bless you. My mother probably just bought every one of them and now I'm at work. I love, it. I love you, Mom, if you're watching. Praise the Lord. But I'm just saying... Everybody is in it to deceive you, to take advantage of you. That's right. That's right. And in the last days, many people are going to say, well, I'm going to rescue you. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Savior. Follow me. Vote for me. Look to me. I can make a difference and change everything for the benefit for you. And they're going to deceive many. Yep, no. Oh, this is exactly what it looks like. It says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. But look at verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound. You look at this word iniquity. Oh, it's unbelievable. Iniquity is just when sin becomes so awful. This is wickedness. Iniquity is wickedness. And let's look at this. And because wickedness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. People will not truly love anybody else. Think of it. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. How many people truly love God more than they love themselves? How many people love their neighbor more than they love themselves? I can say this. It is a sad state that our world is in. Amen. It's unbelievable. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I love that verse. I'll tell you, we don't need to be ashamed of our Savior Jesus Christ. We don't need to be ashamed of His Word. But right now, it is, becoming to, it is coming to the point to where it seems like when you tell somebody that you're a Christian, automatically you are trying to defend your faith or apologize the world. It's trying to apologize. Well, but our church is a little bit more liberal, so you're welcome at our church. Oh, it's a sad day, isn't it? They automatically feel like that they've got to give a, a reason why that they're a Christian. Oh, we're not hate mongers like the others are. And we, oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. I want us to look, understand this too. We don't have to make everyone like us. Listen, you don't have to try to make everybody like you. I'll tell you, that's one of the biggest problems in the world. We try so desperately to get people to like us that we will do whatever we can to make them happy. That's right. Businesses will do whatever they can so that you will like them so that you will come in and buy their products. They'll do whatever they can. They'll lie to you. They'll say they're for something and they're really not just to get you to buy their stuff. And so we don't have to make everyone like us. We don't have to make everyone accept us. What we really have to do, and, and listen, we, the world does not like Jesus because Jesus represents a radical life change. You see? That's why they don't like the Jesus of the Bible. If, the, if, if people are preaching Jesus and not pre preaching radical life change or full surrender to God, they're preaching a false Jesus. See, everybody wants, to, everybody wants to water down who Jesus is to make everybody else like Him first. Like Him first, and then you can follow Him. I'll tell you, our Jesus doesn't care whether or not we make everybody else try to like us. What He's concerned about is are we following His directives? Are we following His Word? I want us to look in the Old Testament just for a moment. Micah, if you can, Micah chapter 6. The writer of this passage in Micah is trying to say, what is it that will make God like me? What is it that I need to do before the presence of the Lord? He's not concerned about the rest of the world. How does the rest of the world view me? How does the rest of the world view Hey, if you're following Christ Jesus, then it's okay. 
It's okay because when Matthew chapter 24 rolls around, you're going to be hated for following Jesus. Right. You might as well go ahead and come to the recognition of knowing that you will be hated of all nations. You will be persecuted and they will eventually kill you just for standing with Jesus. So Micah in chapter 6, verse 6, he's asking these questions. Micah chapter 6, verse 6 says, Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? He's saying, what, what, what is it that is going to make Jesus, what is it that's going to make God and me click together? Should I come with Him with a whole lot of burnt offerings? Verse 7 says, Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? He's trying to say, What kind of gift can I give Him? What kind of gifts can I give God? Or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? He's trying to think of all the luxuries of the world. He's like, Should I go with Him with burnt offerings? Should I go and give Him all of these... Uh, uh, livestock and cattle? Should I give him rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgressions? He's trying to say, should I give him my firstborn? I mean, should I give him my son? Should I give him my, my, my children? What am I, you know, what, what is it? And he says, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? He's trying so desperately to, to ask these rhetorical questions, if you will. What is it that I need to do? Notice, by the way, whenever we're, we're going to read these, notice never once does Micah say, I need to make sure that I make a good name for myself here on the world. I need to make sure that everybody likes me. I need to make sure that I, I dumb myself down so that I don't misstep and I don't say anything that would be controversial. Look at what it says here. He says, He has showed the old man what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly? I love this word to do justly. That means to be fair. That means to be to be to be fair with everything, to be just. It says, again, uh, it says, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and look at this, love mercy. mercy. Amen. Love grace. Love forgiveness. Love compassion. The, all of these things is mercy. All of these things. Jesus represents the ultimate mercy. Yeah. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He showed us mercy. And we need to love mercy. Not only do we need to show mercy, but to love it. And who is love? God is love. Amen? Amen. And Jesus says, the Father and I are one. Sure. So we need to love Jesus. We need to love one another. Amen. We need to be justly. It says, and to walk humbly. Look at this. <coughs> and to walk humbly. Humbly with our God. Right. To walk humbly with our God. What, what does that look like? To walk humbly with your God. No. I'll tell you. You just, you let God be God. <laughs> it's unbelievable that in America we are so used to being our own boss. And again, society is so used to calling their own shots. If you don't like your life, you just you just do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. Well, walk humbly before God is to say, God, I am going wherever you want me to go. Amen. I love it. My little boy Grayson, I love it that he will walk over to me and just hold my hand. Don't you love it when kids just Amen. hold your hand? Or grandkids just hold your hand and they'll walk with you and you just lead them. The other day, I just led them around in circles. <laughs> And he was just as content. And so after a while, he goes, Dad, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares in his world? He's walking with his father. Who cares? He's Amen. going wherever his dad takes him. And he knows that eventually, he knows that his dad loves him. He knows that his dad loves him. 
And he knows that eventually everything's going to work out better if he just holds dad's hand. Amen. That's the way we need to be. Amen. Amen. As a church, as a people, we just need to hold God's hand. And no matter what happens around us, no matter who calls us names, no matter who tells us, hey, what are you doing out there? Just hold on to his hand and let him walk with you. Even if you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, you should fear no evil because your Father, Jesus, is with you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right. Our God is with us. And hold on to Him humbly. And then humbly is, don't just stop and just let Him drag you. That's the worst. I, I was that child. I was that child that whenever you left the supermarket, you said, praise the Lord, my kids aren't like Him. I was that one. And I'll tell you, I am. So, I apologize if my mother's watching. I apologize. I am so sorry for that. But I was that one. But don't do that. Don't just let him drag him and say, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But I'm not letting go. Because you know that the blessings are on the other side. Amen. Humbly is accepting the path. Right. Accepting the path. And Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 was saying, this is where it's going to lead. It's going to lead with you shall be hated of all nations because for my sake. Amen. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. A lot of people don't want to be okay with that because again, we don't want people to dislike us. We feel like that we've got to apologize for Jesus. I'll tell you, if you, have, if you feel like that you have to apologize for Jesus, then there's a very good chance that you're not going to make it. Amen. It's so sad, isn't it? But our God wants us to follow Him. Again, I'm going to read this one more time. And it says, verse 8, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. I tell you, it's amazing that we need to do that. Let's look at uh, this. One final verse before we close. Romans chapter 1, if you will. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 13. Now, I would not have you ignorant. I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come to you, but was let here too, that I might have some fruit among you also, even among other Gentiles. I wanted us to stop there and to think this. See, the writer here was saying, I am telling the gospel to the Gentiles, not just the Jews. Right. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. For those people who were born with an amazing brain that is able to do rocket science, or maybe you could be a surgeon, then praise the Lord for your brain. Praise the Lord for you. God did not give me that luxury. He did not give me that. I had to just fight my way through third grade. You should not have to apologize for his brain. Amen. You should not apologize for what God gave you. And, and and so, but both to the wise and the unwise, he's saying, look, they're all in the same boat here. Everybody needs the gospel. Everybody needs Jesus. Amen. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how rich you are. I don't care who you are. Verse 15. So much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He's like, I am ready to tell you all about Jesus. I don't care who you are. I don't care who your parents were. I don't care about what color your skin was. I don't care about anything at all. All I care about is proclaiming to you the truth. He says, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He's not ashamed of it. We should never, ever, 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 ever have to apologize for our Jesus. Amen. We should never have to apologize for the Bible. We should never have to apologize for what it says. Amen. It is true. It is true. It is true. 
He says, verse 16 again, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believeth. So in the future, if Matthew chapter 24 rolls around, and someone should say, you should need to stop preaching and following Jesus. You need to stop following that God. That is offensive. You say, I'm not ashamed of this God. Amen. I am not ashamed of the Word of God. If it, if it offends you, then that is between you and God, not you and me. I am just serving God because, and I am serving Christ Jesus in the good news, for it is the power of God unto salvation unto everyone who believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Meaning, hey, this is the way to get to heaven, and I am not ashamed of it. In fact, I love it so much, I'm going to tell the persecutor. Amen. Those who are going to be afflicting you, persecuting you, killing you, you need to tell them the gospel. Amen. That's what he's saying. You Amen. love it so much that you're willing to tell everybody. Amen. Satan of the world, he wants to deceive you. Amen. He wants to silence you. Right. He wants you to be afraid to utter the biblical truths. He wants you to be afraid to stand for biblical truths. He wants you to be ashamed of this Bible. He wants you not to tell anybody that you go to church or attend church regularly. He's trying to shut it down. He wants it to be shut down. He don't want, to, he don't want the world to hear this. It is so close. Our Lord very soon could be just like the song that she sung. Jesus one day is going to look down. Heaven is going to finally proclaim it's ready. It's time. Amen. Amen. It's time. I'll tell you right now, the harvest is ready. Yes. It's all ready for Jesus to come and take His harvest out. Later on, it'll be time for God's angels to come down and harvest after Jesus. And whenever they harvest, they're going to take them and put them in a wine press and just press them down. Mm -hmm. Just wrath and destruction will come upon this world. Right. I'll tell you, I want to be ready for the first harvest. Hallelujah. When Jesus comes and takes us, oh, what a day that will be. What a day that will be. That's the way we ought to end. Are you ready for Jesus? Amen. Amen. Are you ready Hallelujah. for Jesus? Uh, do not be ashamed of the gospel Praise of Jesus God. Christ. Do not be ashamed of the person that God made you to be. And you still let Him mold you and make yeah. you into someone even greater than you are now. Love Him so much that you allow Him to do whatever He wants to do with you. Think of that. Think of that. People in sports all the time will go and they will get a coach. And they will say, they will sell their soul out for this coach. They will say, Coach, you make me into this amazing athletic breed of a person so that I can be successful. And they will spend day and night eating the right foods, training, lifting weights, exercising, doing everything so that they can be successful while here on earth. Unbelievable. But I'll tell you, people here on earth, followers of Christ, we need to go to our God and say, God, you train me. You make me the person you want me to be. I will eat what you want me to eat. I will walk where you want me to walk. I will read what you want me to read. I will do whatever it takes to be successful in your eyes. What, how amazing would that be? That's what I'm telling this church. I do believe that if Jesus would walk in, He would say that to you right now. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe it. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't think that that's what He would say. But I would say, I, would say, hey, I want you to fully surrender. Oh man, we might sing two songs. I surrender all. That's what He wants. Not 25%. Are you kidding me? I mean, I can just imagine right now. You mean you're just going to tie 10% of your life? Yeah. I want it all. Amen. Amen. I want it all. That's right. what making Him King is. Yes. That's what making Him Lord is. Us to go before Him and say, what is Thy bidding this morning? When you wake up in the morning, say, what is Thy bidding, Lord? What would You have me to do with my life today, Lord? What would You like for me to do? I'll do whatever. Where He sends me, I will go. Right? Oh, man, where he leads, I will follow. We might have revival. I'll tell you what, we might just have revival, a song revival. Do you see that these people wrote these songs because
because they're trying so desperately to get your attention. It's time for us to wake up and understand what we're doing here. All right, let's sing a song.